bringing you Buccaneers news, predictions, and more. What's going on, Bucks fans? My name is James Hill, and today we're going to be talking about the recent news of the Buccaneers releasing guard J.R. Sweezy. Now, with this release, the Buccaneers save a whopping $6.2 million from his salary for the 2018-2019 season, and we actually have a lot of questions to answer here. One, why did the Buccaneers release J.R. Sweezy? Two, what are the Buccaneers going to spend that money on? Again, a whopping $6.2 million. And three, who's going to start at right guard now that a lot of people's um, favorite, I guess you could say, to start at that position is now gone? Is it going to be Caleb Beninock? Is it going to be Alex Kappa? I'm going to be looking at all of that in today's video, so I hope you all enjoy. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is why. Why did the Tampa Bay Buccaneers release J.R. Sweezy? Well, at the end of the day, it all comes down to injuries. Again, the Buccaneers had signed J.R. Sweezy to a five-year, $32.5 million deal, and things were looking pretty good. Coming into this team, he was uh, labeled as a mauler at the running game. He was a huge force in the running game for the, the uh, Seattle Seahawks, whenever they had him for the past four years, and things were starting to look up uh, as we hopefully had improved at the guard position, and uh, Sweezy was looking to be a very very valuable and key starter for this team. However, injuries played a very big part in Sweezy's two years with the team. In 2016, he came in and was very shortly into his time with the team, he was injured. That's right, he had a back injury, which uh, eventually put him on the physically unable to perform list, and then eventually they put him on the IR later in the season. So his first year with the team, he did not play a single game. Moving on then into his second year, he was actually able to get out 14 games for the team until he was eventually, yet again, injured with a leg injury. He had uh, broken a bone in his leg and he uh, has since been recovering from that. So we actually had a few games where J.R. Sweezy was available, 14 to be exact, like I said. So how did he do in those games? Uh, not he wasn't bad under any circumstances he was certainly a liability at some points uh, specifically in the passing game because a lot of people had labeled you know they said he's not very good in the passing game and that showed at certain points um however you could tell he just never was able to be fully healthy for an entire season uh with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers he was it just looked like he was always playing hurt he never looked comfortable out there playing because he's probably had a lot of lingering injuries and still does to a certain degree so like I said, uh, 14 games in two seasons, that's not very good. And I don't know if it was a situation where he just wasn't a very good player. I don't think that's the situation at all. I just feel that he is a very injured man and the Buccaneers, unfortunately, can't use an injured man very well. So that really does spell the end of uh, most players who get hurt. They eventually do end up getting released if they can't come back healthy and be able to perform at a normal level. And Sweezy is an uh, unfortunate circumstance of one of, uh, one of those situations. So now that we know why the Tampa Bay Buccaneers had released J.R. Sweezy, and the next question is, what are they going to spend that money on? They have a whopping $6.2 million that they save for releasing the uh, often injured guard. And if you want my opinion, I'm going to say that a lot of that money is going to go to extensions for Donovan Smith, Ali Marpet, and Quan Alexander, and possibly Jameis Winston. I don't know, okay? A big concern for the Buccaneers coming, uh, Bucks fans, I guess I should say, a big concern for them coming out of this offseason was, okay, we don't have a whole lot of money left to work with to get guys like Donovan Smith, Ali Marpet, and Quan Alexander contract extensions. What are we going to do? We spent a lot of money in free agency signing guys like Vinny Curry, also bringing back Brent Grimes and signing Mike Evans and Cameron Brake to extensions. How are we going to lock up a potential franchise left tackle, a franchise guard, as well as a potential franchise middle line? Backer, how are we going to get the money to do that? Well, releasing JR Sweezy helps out that situation a whole heck of a lot. $6.2 million to be exact, and that's a lot of money. You could give that money to either Donovan Smith or Ali Marpet or Quan Alexander, and it would make a lot of sense for those contracts. Um, I feel that $6.2 million is probably maybe going to be around where Quan Alexander would want, maybe. Um, definitely for sure around the ballpark of what Ali Marpet might get, and then maybe for Donovan Smith, that one's still up in the air. But Quan and Donovan Smith are probably going to be worth more than that, but that might be right around the starting negotiating price for Ali Marpet. So it definitely saves a lot of money and a lot of uh, trouble for the 
um, general manager and his staff to try and figure out where are we going to get this money from. This is a big move to get more money to extend those guys. And for the Bucks fans who are saying, oh, let's use that money and go get another veteran quarterback or actually go pick up a safety, mm, it's a possibility. Now, I don't think they're going to pick up a veteran quarterback because there is still some guys out there, maybe Rashad Breland, um, maybe some other guys who are still out there. I just don't think they're going to do it because you invested two second round picks in guys in MJ Stewart and Carlton Davis. You also brought back Brent Grimes and you also have a former first round pick in Vernon Hargraves the third. So I don't think that's uh, where the money's going to go. The safety position, however, is a lot more interesting proposition because you still have a lot of guys out there whose markets have been terrible up to this point. Trey Boston apparently got a very, very embarrassing offer from the Arizona Cardinals. So he is still out there and you could probably give him a still reduced contract that he might end up accepting because uh, quite frankly, this, uh, this safety market's terrible at this point. Um, you also have guys like Kenny Vaccaro, Eric Reed, as well as Tyvon Branch who are still out there. And those are all very respectable and starting caliber safety. You even have the option to bring back TJ Ward. I know a lot of fans uh, felt, felt that TJ Ward got shafted and that he really should deserve a second chance for this team. Uh, maybe if those two can agree on terms, maybe you could end up bringing them back with that money. Uh, you would certainly still have a lot left over, though, uh, regardless of which safety you sign. Uh, it would probably only require half to sign one of them. But the final question is going to be, what are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going to do at right guard? You know, I thought this, and a lot of Bucks fans thought this too, that Sweezy was going to be the guy, the starting right guard, at least to start for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to start the season. But now that he's gone, what happens now? Well, you have a very interesting battle that's going to take place. Uh, you have Alex Kappa, the newly drafted rookie that a lot of people said that this that he had the best tape that they had seen in a very long time. The guy's an absolute mauler, and he sometimes loses his technique and sometimes just tries to maul people, and I think that's hilarious. If you want to see the video that I did on Alex Kappa when he was first drafted, it's going to be in the eye icon in the top right of the screen. After that, you have Caleb Benenock, who is probably the favorite at this point, considering he's been a very good switchblade type of uh, offensive lineman. He's able to play tackle and guard, and he's actually uh, not too bad when you break it down. He, uh, I've always been kind of iffy on him, but now I'm kind of getting more comfortable with him and kind of seeing like, okay, he, he could possibly be a starter for us. And then you even have the veteran in Evan Smith, uh, one of my favorite offensive linemen on this team. I know some people don't like him that much, which is fine. You know, that's totally fine, but I feel that he is a pretty decent lineman. He's at least a very good safety insurance player. Uh, policy, I guess you could say, for either the backup center position or the backup right guard position or even starting right guard position, you know, just in case if things don't work out over there. But whoever is going to be placed there, I think they're going to not be in too bad of a situation, be it either Alex Kappa, Caleb Benenock, or Evan Smith. Those are kind of the three guys who I expect to battle for that spot. Um, but whoever's going to be placed there, I like where they're going to be placed because they're going to be surrounded by Ryan Jensen, one of, if not the highest paid center in the league at this point, who had a very, very productive season last year, top five center in the league. I think, oh, a top 10 center in the league, my bad. And then you have um, DeMar Dodson at right tackle, a top three right tackle in the league, I believe. So that's pretty darn impressive. And that definitely gives whoever moves into right guard a lot of cushion, be it Caleb Benenock or Alex Kappa, who don't necessarily have a lot of experience as a starting offensive lineman, let alone a starting right guard, or even Evan Smith, who has uh, starting experience not only as an offensive lineman, but he uh, started a little bit for the Buccaneers at guard at times as well. So yeah, guys, that's it. It's really sad to see a guy like J.R. Sweezy go, especially due to such an unfortunate thing such as injuries. But I'm in very interested to see what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do here moving forward, how they spend that money, who starts at right guard. Um, that's definitely an interesting one as well. So let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. What do you think the Buccaneers are going to spend that money on? Do you think they're going to use probably around half of it to go out and get maybe a starting caliber safety like a Tyvon Branch, like an Eric Reed, or like a uh, Kenny Baccaro? Um, or do you feel that they are going to use that money specifically for extensions for Ali Marpet, Donovan Smith, as well as Quan Alexander? And then also let me know down in the comment section below as well. Who do you think is going to start at right guard? Do you think it's going to be Alex Kappa or Caleb Benar? Kind of the new, two newish guys to this um, whole starting offensive lineman thing. I know Caleb Benenock started a little bit, so maybe he has the edge there. Or do you feel it's going to be a veteran like Evan Smith? Or do you feel they're even going to use that money to bring in a veteran offensive lineman? Again, let me know all of this down in the comment section below. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new. And hit the notification bell to always get notified whenever I upload and whenever I live stream. Uh, next video is probably going to be an update video talking about some new changes that are coming to the channel. I just recently got a new camera, which is why you're seeing uh, new lighting and new camera.
cameras. You know, I'm trying to upgrade things on here, man. I'm trying to make things look pretty. So yeah, hope you guys all enjoyed. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. But until then, goodbye for now, guys. And as always, go Bucks.